So thanks everyone for coming. So today I will uh, give you a brief introduction about my thesis topic. The, its name is uh, Cost Effective Deep Learning in Medical Image Analysis. I will uh, present my, what I have currently accomplished and uh, I will also propose the future plan. Deep learning is very popular in the recent uh, decade because it does not require us to design handcraft the feature for specific imaging task, but it automatically learns the image feature, feature in an end-to-end -end manner with the use of deep neural network. So we call it deep learning. It has led to a wide range of applications such as face, face detect recognition, self-driving car, natural language processing, and the inventor of deep learning received the Turing Award last year, which is largely a Nobel Prize in computer science. Deep learning also have a huge impact in the healthcare. The recent uh, literature have showed the deep learning algorithm have achieved the similar performance as the human experts in most common disease, such as lung nodule, skin cancer, lung cancer, skin cancer, and diabetic disease. However, the biggest barrier when apply, applying deep learning to the medical imaging is that it needs a huge amount of annotation cost. So what is the annotation cost? For example, to train a deep model for the uh, lung cancer detection, the human expert have to tell it where is the lung nodule and how big it is for every patient CT scan. So to achieve the human level uh, lung cancer detection, the human expert have to uh, annotate this kind of patient CT scan more than 42,000 in such a way. And for skin cancer, the human expert have to first locate where is the disease location and then label, annotate it, whether the image is uh, benign or malignant. And this kind of annotation requires like, more than 120,000 clinical image to achieve the good performance. Similarly, for the diabetic disease, the human expert have to also locate where is the disease for more than 120,000 retina image. As you can see, the success, the big success behind the deep learning in most common disease relies heavily on the larger amount of annotation cost, including time and money. What about the disease that is new? We don't have so many annotations. So all, my thesis is try to answer the question that how to develop an effective deep learning algorithm for those diseases that have no such labeled big data. For example, COVID-19. It is currently a emerging and um, rapidly evolving outbreak since the beginning of the year. So we believe to quickly develop an effective computer-aided diagnosis system is important because during the outbreak, a flow of patients are waiting for the diagnosis, diagnosis result. And also doctors do not have time to annotate every patient in a short span of time. Most importantly, not many doctors have the expertise for the new disease. So we propose to train a deep model from the, uh, from the image that are labeled by the real human expert on this particular disease and then deploy the model to the hospital or to the region that do lack of this kind of uh, expertise. So, so that it will lead to the huge impact to the healthcare. Here I show the pipeline of how we usually uh, adopt the deep learning algorithm to the healthcare. First, we acquire the annotation from the human expert and then use this annotation to train the deep model. And finally, deploy, if successful, deploy it to the uh, uh, clinical practice. To quickly develop an effective computer-aided diagnosis system, our research goal is to uh, use the novel method to minimize the um, ma manual labeling effort. We have uh, specified the three aims to optimize the pipeline as follows. First, acquire necessary annotation efficiently from human experts. Second, utilize the existing annotation effectively from the advanced deep neural network design. And third, extract generic knowledge directly 
from this huge amount of unlabeled image. To verify the, these three aims, we have uh, uh, selected nine different uh, medical imaging user cases. It includes disease detection, disease and organ segmentation, and the disease classification. I will present my current progress and propose the uh, future work for one by one for each of the aims in the following. My first aim is to acquire necessary annotation efficiently from human experts. As we dis discussed, the annotation is very important for training a deep model. But medical images are generated every day in the hospital. And given the limited money and given the limited of uh, time, it is impossible, is it uh, not impossible, infeasible to annotate each and every clinical image so the problem we try to solve is to find the most important images subset from the huge database and put, give them to the human expert to annotate. One of the most common approaches is called human in the loop active learning procedure. It incorporates the human expert and the deep learning model together to improve the overall computer aided diagnosis accuracy. First, give a pre-trained model. We get the prediction from the unlabeled images. Based on the prediction, we select the most important image and send them to the human expert. An expert will label this image and we merge this into the label set. And use this kind of annotation, we can train, fine tune the model. And after fine tuning, we can also get the prediction from the unlabeled image and select the most important image and feedback to the human expert. So this is a loop. So that's what we call human in the loop, okay? And the key challenge in this procedure is how to select the most important images. Let's give an example. We have adopted two major symptoms for COVID-19 and classify each uh, patient to the positive and negative group as shown colored in uh, red and green. Okay, and here patient A and patient B are unlabeled patient for now. And it gives a limited budget. We cannot label both of them, okay? And uh, which patient would you consider to annotate first and then adopt to our model training? If we first look at patient A, it can already be classified almost very confidently in the positive group by the current model classifier. So we, we do not expect a major change of decision boundary by labeling this patient. However, the patient B is more ambiguous to the current classifier. Whether it's a positive or it's a negative, it will dramatically change the decision boundary for the current classifier. So that's what we call so that we assume that label you pay for labeling patient B will be more uh, important than patient A. So to randomly select the sample from the unlabeled set and label it, we call it random selection. And here, with the number of the annotated data increase, the deep neural network accuracy will also increase. That's why we want so many data, right? But on the other hand, if we always consider the most important patient to be labeled first, we call it active selection. Active selection will quickly achieve the comparable performance with lower number of annotated data. Therefore, we hypothesize that wisely or actively select the important cases can reduce not only the number of required annotated data, but also the cost of annotation dramatically. So this represents how many annotation costs will be reduced. So our previous study have shown that, uh, have confirmed this hypothesis or assumption. So here the solid line is uh, active learning and the dashed line is uh, random selection. We have uh, conducted the experiment on three medical application and one natural imaging application. The conclusion is using our active learning method, it can reduce the annotation cost by at least 60% compared to random selection. The limitation of our current active learning procedure is that it can only suggest the most important lesion 
or disease area every time. That means if a patient contain multiple lesions, the current active procedure, active learning procedure might suggest the same patient multiple times to the human expert and each time on a different lesion. This means that human experts have to repeat going through the same patient again and again and again. It's a waste of time. So we propose to iteratively suggest the important page, um, samples at the patient level. By transitioning from lesion level annotation to patient level annotation, the doctors do not no longer have to repeat go through the same patient multiple times to detect all the disease that the patient might have but they can only go through once and annotate all the disease simultaneously. It will significantly uh, speed up the annotation uh, efficient. Okay, that's the end of the M1. <clears throat> after, getting, after getting the certain amount of annotation, my second aim is to utilize this existing annotation effectively, effectively from the advanced deep neural network architecture design. It is important because better architecture design can lead to better performance in disease classification, detection, and segmentation. For this aim, we are particularly focused on the image segmentation task that partition an image into multiple pieces to clearly localize both um, organs and disease. Image segmentation will help quantitatively, quantitatively um, measurement of the disease and make the surgery more precise. The challenge is when we acquire the annotation for, for the segmentation task, the human expert had to draw the contour for each object precisely. This is how we call the annotation for the segmentation task. So the most popular architecture to do image segmentation is called UNET because it looks like a U. The input is the original medical image, and the output is the model prediction of the um, object that we are interested in. UNET consists of an encoder that encodes the image data to the deep uh, latent space and have a decoder to decode the latent space feature to the segmentation map. So it is a deep learning, so there's a lot of layer sequentially. So each layer will extract a different level of image feature. So we hypothesis that by aggregating multiple uh, scale feature can lead to more powerful model for image segmentation. That means not only just to use this level four image feature as UNET did, we also want to use uh, level three, level two, level one feature simultaneously. Therefore, we have devised uh, advanced architecture based on the original UNET. Uh, there are two innovations compared to the UNET, so we call it the UNET++. <clears throat> the first innovation is that we uh, redesigned the skip connection to encourage the different level of uh, image feature aggregation. And the second innovation is introduce deep supervision. In contrast to the UNET architecture, UNET++ provide additional supervision for each level of image feature so that it can achieve a higher segmentation accuracy because of more supervision. Our previous study have shown that uh, UNET++, as shown in the red bar, significantly outperform UNET in five different medical imaging tasks, including neuron, New, neuron uh, structure segmentation, cell and the cell nuclear segmentation, brain tumor and uh, liver segmentation. It shows UNET++ significantly improves the disease and organ segmentation performance. The limitation is acquire, acquiring uh, annotation for segmentation task need a high demands of time to draw the contour for each and every object. To solve this problem, we propose to optimize the active learning procedure by leveraging our unique architecture design of UNET++. Because of the full head of UNET++, it can give the annotation suggestion for each pixel, pixel level in the image simultaneously 
instead of annotating all the objects in the entire image, it only recommends the small selective region for human to annotate. So you don't need to uh, annotate all, just uh, select the most important region to annotate. And the rest of the region can be automatically se segmented by the machine. So it's a reduced a lot of time. So far, we have only discussed how to use the annotated data, but it is also important to discover the, po <laughs> the power of unlabeled image. So my first aim is to utilize the unlabeled image to extract generic features, generic knowledge directly without human annotation so that each target model can benefit from this generic image representation through transfer learning. We learn the representation transfer to each specific task. So the problem we try to solve is how to successfully utilize a huge amount of unlabeled, unlabeled image. We have observed that medical image embedded with um, consistent and recurrent anatomic structure. So we hypothesize that using this free information or free knowledge, we can empower the deep neural network with a generic and a powerful image representation. To achieve this goal, we have a device um, image restoration task to help the model learn the representation. Give the original image, we first deform it and then ask the model to learn how to recover the original image. To deform an image, we have a device, the four different image deformation. First, nonlinear transformation, where it uh, manipulates the intensity value in each original image. And the second, pixel, local pixel shuffling, that we randomly shuffle the pixel location within each image and ask the model to recover. And the third, give the original image, we hide the outer range, outer region of the image, and then ask the model to recover it. And for the inner cutout, we hide the inner region of the image and ask the model to recover it. Our study has shown that learning from this different perspective can lead to a very robust pre-trained model. We have built the generic pre-trained 3D model we call it models genetics because those models are pre-trained, are learning image representation directly from image, image itself without any human manual annotation. And this model can lead to powerful target model for multiple image, multiple image, uh, medical imaging application through transfer learning. Compared with other existing approaches, models genesis shows higher precision and more robust performance in five different uh, target medical applications, including lung nodule, false positive reduction, and the segmentation, and the pulmonary embryon detection, and the liver and the brain tumor segmentation. We pre-train our model genesis on more than 800 chest CT scan, and then transfer the image representation to different target models. However, the model genesis only show the generalizability within the same image modality. That is, that means if the model is pre-trained on chest CT, it, it, it can be more beneficial on the target applications that are in the chest area and in the CT modality. So in the future, we intend to collect medical images from different modalities and pre-train the modality or oriented um, gen generic model for improve the accuracy in that particular modality. So we collect the uh, X-ray, we train it called a Genesis X-ray, and it will benefit for X-ray modality, any disease, any organs. Moreover, we also intend to collect the medical images from different body parts and pre-train the organ-oriented um, generic model for improve the accuracy in that particular organ such as the genesis lung, genesis liver, genesis brain, that once this model is trained, it can benefit for um, many, many uh, target applications that is uh, uh, related to brain area. To sum up, my research goal is to exploit novel method to minimize the manual labeling effort for rapid and uh, precise computer-aided diagnosis for lung disease. So three aims. First, collect the most important subset of the image and uh, 
pay for it, label it. And using this annotation, we want to devise uh, advanced uh, deep neural architect architecture to make good use of this precious annotation. And finally, we aim to also look into the large amount of uh, unlabeled image to learn the gen generic image representation to help the deep model learn better and learn faster. In the clinical side, we uh, plan to adopt our new innovation to the COVID-19 disease. We have uh, built the cooperation with the Renmin Hospital of Wuhan University, and they will provide us more than 200 positive patients and the thousands of negative patient sample images. So our goal of this project is to create a reliable CAD system in a short span of time for automatic detect the COVID-19. That would be all. Thank you very much.